Hello and welcome to another Malware Forensic Analysis video. In the last one we uh, took a malware sample called Virut CE, which is a polymorphic uh, piece of malware. We executed it and we tried to uh, ascertain if it called out to the internet anywhere. And it did. We suspect those calls were made out to command and control servers. We also uh, noticed in a hex editor that there were indications that the sample had been, that the outer layer of it had been packed using UPX, and uh, the possible indications that that version used was version 2. So what we're going to do in this video is start to peel back those layers so that we can get to the base payload, because to an organisation in a major incident, we don't really care about what obfuscation techniques are used on the malware or how complex they are. You know, we're not out to be impressed on that level. Basically, we just want to know what, if we can extract what the payload is and basically see see what it's done and if we've lost any data. So, let's kick off. Um, uh, probably the best way to confirm whether or not UPX has been used on this is to just run a few tools. So there's some, there's some use, useful tools out there. I like to start off with uh, PEID. It's, it's a pretty old tool uh, and I'm not entirely sure that uh, thinking about the age that it's going to detect UPX up to version 2 but we can give it a go it's it's a fairly powerful tool uh, for what it is uh, plugins wise so it's it's uh, quite a handy thing to start off with so yeah it's it's, it's basically found nothing there uh, which isn't surprising due to the age of the tool there are other tools uh, looking out there on the internet um, and and on YouTube videos so a really a really good one that I've seen recently is Detect It Easy. It's got loads of other functions in it for uh, trying to pick out what underlying um, um, languages have been used on the payload underneath the underneath the packing uh, to dig into a bit more detail about where exactly the uh, the sample has been packed uh, within it. So that that's a really handy one. If I've got time at some point, I'm gonna I'll try and do a video on that later. Um, if there's not already a better one out there on the internet now. Uh, I like to use two sets of tools anyway when checking for packing, just in case one fails. Um, the other one that, that's in my toolbox is RDG uh, Packer Detector. quite like this one. Uh, so we'll run the sample through that. <coughs> and it has detected what we suspected. So it has detected that it uses uh, UPX and it uses UPX version 2. Um, let's switch over to the um, to the other mode this has got. What it will do is it will try and detect if there's layer upon layer of um, of of packing used on this thing. Okay, so um, although it's saying that there's possible other other layers of protection or multiple versions in use, I think that's a bit of a false alert. So we'll ignore that. But it's always handy to have a quick look anyway, just in case it comes up with anything handy. Um, so what we'll do is, we'll try and use UPX to actually unpack this as it was used to pack it. Um, I've got a version of UPX downloaded. It looks like I've got version 3, but we'll double check that in a minute. I've copied the malware over into this directory, but you know, let's just do it again in case just in case that went a bit wrong. Okay, um, so let's let's have a quick look. We'll double check what version we've got first. Um, so yeah, we have got version three, so it should be backwards compatible with version two. Um, we want to decompress this, and we'll want to specify an output file for this. So if we do upx um, minus d, our malware samples name and we'll have that output to um, malware upx decompress.exe. Uh, okay, so that's good. That's uh, the file has expanded a little bit. So that should have decompressed that. Yep, so we have a new sample. Let's copy that onto the desktop. And we'll have a quick look at that. So let's run that back through our tools. I know that. Um, PID was a bit useless before, but we'll have we'll try again. Okay, now that's interesting. So it's detected that this is Visual Basic, which I wasn't expecting. So Virut 
CE and what it what it's going to be doing, I would probably expect to be in a low level language such as C or, or you know C plus plus or or something like that, not not VB. Um, that's a bit weird. Let's run it through the other tool again, just in case that's um, in case that's a false alert. That's interesting. Why is that automatically? Yeah, it's Visual Basic 6, so that's a bit weird. Let's decompress it and have a look. Decom decompile it, sorry, and we'll have a look at it. Oops. So I will decompile this one. So decompile, okay, so it's Visual Basic. Yep, that looks successful to me. It's got a form. Okay, it's got a few timers in it. And some Chinese characters. <coughs> Interesting. So, what is this doing? Oh, that seems to ring a bell. don't know why. This looks a bit weird. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, it's bypassing security warnings. So it's doing. Oh, there's the URL. We saw a request for this going out in the previous video. So we saw two requests going out, one which was an IRC request and one which was the request for this. So I suspect, as we're not seeing the IRC request, that the IRC request is from Virut CE and this is actually a separate piece of malware that it's packaged with. But I'm not seeing anything calling the Virut um, it's not doing like a, a pointer over to the Virut malware, so I'm not. I don't know if we've actually broken it running the, the Virut stuff. Yes, he is looking for security warnings. Um, it's doing something with Internet Explorer, so it's probably installing a plugin and bypassing security to do so. For installing a toolbar or something. Yeah, there's that reference again. Ah, oh, it's Zango. It's Zango toolbar. Which means it's going to pull down. Yeah, see here, it's going, it's, it's going out to that website that we saw earlier and looking for a setup.exe. And it's trying to then install and bypass um, security to install an Internet Explorer extension. Uh, this is interesting, but it's not quite what we want, and I've seen no calls up to now for um, there's no sort of shell calls or anything like that to call our malware. So I think I think unpacking has broken our malware, which is a bit disappointing. Um, I reckon if I now execute this that we're not going to see the IRC call. So let's let's do a snapshot. And then we will let's execute that malware and have a look. Um, okay, so let's attach this to our bonus box again. And then what will happen is, as I said in the last video, that DNS requests will go to my Ubuntu box. Um, iNetSim will take those requests, pass it back to itself, and we'll just get a log here, and nothing will have gone out to the internet. 
Um, so let's double check that that Ubuntu box has been working. Yep, so that's fake mode. It's served by our NetSim. So if we execute this malware now, yeah, I'm not seeing the IRC call now, I'm just seeing the one for Zango. And if we run Process Explorer, oh, at least it's showing that it's unpacked now because it's not that dark purple. See, these must be packed. Okay. Okay, let's wind this machine back then to a nice clean state. There's no point in saving our current state. So, we have decompressed this but it looks like it's broken it, so let's see if we can get any joy if we run it through um, IDA and see if string shows us anything interesting now that it's um, unpacked a bit more. So, <coughs> excuse me. so we see the Zango stuff, it's interesting, we could just hopped in here, we didn't need to actually decompress it. That would probably have been enough for us to then do a search and see. Um, it's all in the text fields on here, so it's not in any of the sort of parts of the file that we would expect anything malicious. So I would probably think that we've that we've actually broken the, the next stage of unpacking. Um, so. Yeah, it's all text on here. Data. Nice. Yeah, I think we've broken it. Okay, so they've obviously done something afterwards so that you can't use UPX to decompress it. So what we can do is Coming back to PID, although it was pathetic at detecting um, detecting whether this was packed with UPX, I have had joy in the past with some of the plugins on here. So the generic um, the generic unpacker is usually quite a good one for older malware. So let's see what that can do. NEP detection during unpacking. Okay. Okay, let's not trust this machine after I've unpacked this thing. <coughs> okay, that's good. It's rebuilding the import. Yes, I would like that. So that is unpacked now with PID. So. Don't really want to execute that again. <coughs> Let's see if we can see anything in. Um, let's run it through either again and see what we can see in here. Oh, well, there's a lot more. There's a lot more going on in here now. So the stuff we've got going on. Oh wow, that is a lot of steps. So yeah, that's a lot of steps. Um, And to me, that looks like a lot of manual work to check through that. Let's have a look and see if we get anything additional in strings. So we've still got Zango in there. Yeah. I'm not seeing. Anything extra apart from the Zango stuff, which is not encouraging. 
but it just shows. I mean, different different unpackers have unpacked this in completely different ways. Uh, you know, this is this is not Visual Basic code that I'm now looking at. This is this is probably a stub that it's it's going to um, that it's then going to execute. What we'll do is before we um, sign off this video, we'll just run this again and just see if it uh, reaches out to the internet. Which could be a bit difficult as I think we've just broken this. <coughs> Yeah, I think we might have broken this when we um, when we unpacked it. So let's go to the pre-execution again. We'll just unpack that and execute it if it lets us. <clears throat> So that started that server. Let's use this guy to unpack the original again. We unpack it. And I'm not sure I took that properly. There we go. I'm definitely making an IRC call out then. Okay. So that was the one that we decompressed manually with UPX. This is the one we just used using PID. If I execute that, <coughs> so it's broken the IRC call again. Run that one more time. Good measure. Yeah, so it's broken the IRC. So, manual unpacking so far. Uh, in the first video, I said Oli Debug uh, couldn't even uh, hook into, um, I, I couldn't even start debugging the process to figure out when, uh, at what point it allocated virtual memory to then dump that out. Um, we've not been able to manually unpack this malware. So um, so we'll move on to a slightly different technique in the next video. Um, so if you want to see that next technique, then um, stick around, watch the next video, and we'll see if we can get uh, the, uh, the actual payload portion of this malware dumped out. Uh, thank you for watching, and if you've got any comments, then please place them below. And if you uh, want to see more of these videos, uh, then feel free to like or